All right, another video dealing with log rules 4.5. In the interest of keeping these videos as short as I can, what I'm gonna do is just these four numeric examples in this video, and then we'll go back and do some more examples, but they won't be numeric, it'll involve variables. And I'll show you how really the same methods that we're gonna use in this video will work when we have letters floating around. But that's a situation that feels a little different to me, so I thought it might make sense to put it in another video. And then there's a couple more little topics floating around that we can handle in the last video and we'll be good with this section. Anyways, without further ado, we have four examples here. The first one says two times the log base six of two plus the log base six of nine. It's tempting to be like, well, the log base six of two and the log base six of nine, can't we use a log rule, specifically this first log rule that says when you have the sum of two different logs, you can change that into a single log if you multiply together these two arguments. It's tempting to say this two times nine is 18, but that won't work out. And the reason you can't use this log rule is this two right here. This is not the log base six of two plus the log base six of nine. It's two times the log base six of two plus the log base six of nine. So if you wanna use this first log rule, we first have to take care of this coefficient. And you're like, what do you mean take care of this coefficient? Well, I'm referring to this third log rule. When we introduced this log rule, we said that if you have an exponent, you can take that exponent and bring it down in front of the log. But if this is equal to this, well then this is also equal to this. So if I ever have a coefficient down in front, I can move that back up and make it an exponent. What I'm saying is my third log rule allows me to rewrite this as the log base six of whatever two squared is equal to, plus the log base six of nine. And two squared is just four, so this is really just the log base six of four, plus the log base six of nine. And now that I have this sum of two different logs, I can use this first log rule. And this first log rule allows me to multiply together these two arguments and combine this into a single log. So I get the log base six of whatever nine times four is, 36 in this case. And the log base six of 36 is just asking me the question, what power do I have to raise six up to to make it equal to 36? And that answer is two because six squared equals 36. There's other ways you could do this problem, but I don't think any of them are as intuitive as this method right here. But if you have a different method and you're getting the same answer, you're probably correct. But if you're using a different method and getting a different answer, well, you're obviously doing something wrong. This second example is a lot like the first example in that you see a sum of two different logs. So maybe you're thinking this first log rule, but you can't immediately use it this time because of this coefficient, this one half right here. What can you do? Well, same idea. We're gonna take that one half and move it up into the exponent by using this third log rule. We're gonna say that this is the log of five plus the log of four raised up to the one half power. And while you could immediately apply your first log rule now, I think it might make it easier to simplify this and say that four to the one half power is just the same as the square root of four and the square root of four is equal to two. So this is the log of five plus the log of two. And now I can apply my first log rule that says that when we're adding together two logs, I can just multiply these arguments. So five times two gives me 10. And the log of 10, remember when there's no base listed here, the 10 is implied. So this is the log base 10 of 10. Asking you the question, what power do you have to raise this implied 10 down here to to make it equal to 10? Well, 10 to the first power is 10, so the answer to this question is just one. This third one's pretty similar, except now instead of adding two terms together, we're subtracting two terms. So we're gonna be thinking about this second log rule instead of this first log rule. But much like the first two examples, we can't immediately apply that log rule because of this coefficient. But fortunately, there's this third log rule, which allows me to take care of this coefficient. So I can rewrite this as the log base three of four minus the log base three of 36. Wait, where'd that 36 come from? I'm taking this two and moving it up into the exponent and six squared equals 36. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Then what would I do? Well, I got this second log rule using the second one because you have subtraction here. All I gotta do is combine this into a single log. It's still the log base three, now of whatever four divided by 36 is equal to. Well, four over 36, you can reduce that fraction to one over nine. And now maybe we can evaluate this log. This is just asking the question, what power do you have to raise three up to to make it equal to a ninth? Well, three squared equals nine. So therefore three to the negative two power would equal one ninth. So the log base three of one ninth is negative two. It's worth pointing out that this third one and the first one for that matter could be done a little bit different. I don't think it's as intuitive, but just in case anybody thought to do it this way, you could rewrite this four as two squared. Why would you rewrite four as two squared? Well, because now we can take this exponent and bring it down in front and call this two times the log base three of two minus two times the log base three of six. And the advantage to this is since there's a two on each of the terms, I could factor it out in front and say this is two times whatever the log base three of two minus the log base three of six is equal to. And the log base three of two minus the log base three of six using my second log rule is a log base three of two divided by six and two divided by six is just a third. 
So this is just two times whatever the log base three of a third is equal to. Well, three to the first power is three, obviously. So three to the negative one power would be one third. So the log base three of one third is negative one. So the answer is two times negative one. In other words, the same negative two that I got up here. I don't think this is as intuitive, but sometimes it helps to see things done in a couple different ways. And just in case anybody had that in mind, I wanted to show it. This fourth one, which note, by the way, I made this 240 to make the numbers work out a little bit better. It's kind of a mess, but I made it a mess on purpose. There's a couple of different ways you can handle this problem. The first way, just brute force. You apply your second log rule on these first two terms, and then that'll turn this into a single log. And once this is a single log, you can apply your first log rule on that log plus this log. Note that you cannot immediately apply your first log rule on these two terms. And the reason why is this minus kind of acts as a coefficient, a negative one on this log of 81. So just like we couldn't apply our first log rule immediately here because of this two, you can't apply your first log rule immediately on this stuff because of the negative one that's out in front here. If you had parentheses here and here, then you can apply your first log rule on these guys. But since you don't, you cannot apply your first log rule. Essentially applying your first log rule would make this minus apply to both of these terms, but it doesn't. We're only subtracting the log of 81. We're not subtracting the log of 240. Anyways, one way we could do this is take these first two terms and apply our second log rule. And you're like, wait, second log rule? Why not apply your third log rule and get rid of this exponent? Well, I could bring this three down in front, but then I wouldn't be able to apply the second log rule on these two terms. So that's a little bit tricky. It wouldn't be wrong to move the three down in front. It just wouldn't get you any closer to the answer, the method that we're doing them now. After I finish this method, I'll show you another method where we do end up doing that. Our second log rule says we can rewrite this as the log of 15 cubed, whatever number that's equal to, divided by 81, plus the log of 240. And now that we have the sum of two different logs, we can apply our first log rule and rewrite this as the log of this thing times this thing. So 15 cubed divided by 81 times 240. And remember, when you're multiplying together a fraction and a whole number, it helps to think about this whole number as a fraction, 240 divided by one. And if you think about that as 240 divided by one, it makes more sense to put that up on the numerator here and maybe call this 240 times 15 cubed divided by 81. And I don't wanna multiply all these together in my head, so I guess I could pull out a calculator and figure out what 240 times 15 to the third power divided by 81 is equal to. You could put this thing in parentheses, but it really doesn't matter. You end up with the same answer either way. We get that's exactly 10,000. I suppose you could argue that if we're already using a calculator to do this part, why not just to use a calculator to figure out the log of that thing? And yeah, that's fine. I mean, you could do that, but really what I'm trying to show you is how to do this without a calculator. We'll get the same answer. The log of 10,000, remember there's the implied 10 here. It's asking you the question, what power you gotta raise 10 up to to make it equal to 10,000? Powers of 10 are e easy. All you gotta do is count the zeros, right? Like there's two zeros in 100 and 10 squared equals 100. There's three zeros in 1,000 and 10 cubed equals 1,000. There's four zeros in 10,000. So 10 to the fourth power is equal to 10,000. Therefore, the log of 10,000 is equal to four. Before ending this video, I wanna show you a different way you could do this, maybe that won't involve a calculator at all, not because you necessarily need different ways to do these, but if there are different problems, these techniques I'm gonna show you how to do this might end up being something you'd need to be able to do. So let me show you how you can do number four a different way that won't involve a calculator at all. What you can do is recognize that since you have this exponent, you can use your third log rule. So we can call this three times the log of 15. And then for this second term, this 81, 81 is nine squared, but nine is three squared. So you can think about this as nine times nine and each of those nines is three times three. So I got three times three times three times three. What I'm trying to say is the log of 81 is the exact same as the log of three raised up to the fourth power because 81 is just three to the fourth power. The reason it's beneficial to write this as an exponent is because in the next line, I'm gonna bring this four down in front. What about this log of 240? Like, I don't know what raised up to some power equals 240. That's fair, I don't either. But since this is log 10, it might help to view 240 as 24 times 10. In the next step, I'll split this up into two different logs using my first log rule. And one of those, the log of 10 will be really easy. And the other one, the log of 24, well, at least it'll be dealing with a smaller number. What I'm saying is we'll leave this first term alone, three times the log of 15 for now anyways. And then the second term will bring the four down in front. So I got four times the log of three. And then for this third term, I'll split it up into two different terms, the log of 24 plus the log of 10. 
okay, I don't really see where this is going though because we have these coefficients so we can't go putting them back together. Over here, I did a trick where I factored out a two, but that only worked because I had the same coefficient here and here. Here I have different coefficients. I got a three and a four. How can I fix that? Well, instead of subtracting four of these log three things, I can subtract three of these log three things and then one more of these log three things. What I'm saying is because negative four is the same as negative three plus negative one, I can rewrite this term as these two terms. I'll leave the log of 24 alone for now. And then the log of 10, I'll write that as a one because 10 to the first power is what is equal to this 10. Now I can combine these first two guys by factoring out a three. I get the log of 15 minus the log of three. And then from that, I'll be subtracting the log of three, but I don't really like this negative here. I wish this was a positive because then I would have a coefficient of one here and a coefficient of one here. And I could put these together with my first log rule. To get rid of this negative one, I could take this negative one and bring it up into the exponent. So I could make this plus the log of three to the negative one power plus the log of 24 plus one. I'm not saying you should think to do all this stuff if you were solving it, I'm just demonstrating it. So if you can just follow from one line to the next, that's great, even if you wouldn't have thought to do that on your own. These parentheses, I got the log of whatever 15 divided by three is equal to using my second log rule. And then these two terms I can use my first log rule on. So this is just the log of whatever three to the negative one times 24 is equal to. Well, three to the negative one is just a third. So a third times 24 is 24 thirds. And then I still have this plus one. I'm getting closer to done, 15 thirds is just five. So I have three of these log five things and 24 thirds is eight. So I have the log of eight and then plus one. Again, we have the problem with the coefficients not matching. There's a three here, there's a one here. So to fix that, I either need to take this three and bring it up into the exponent and make it five cubed, or because eight happens to be two cubed, I could rewrite this eight as two to the third power, which will allow me to take this exponent down in front using my third log rule. And now finally, I can factor out a three and I'm left with the log five plus the log of two plus one. Note that the three only came from these two terms, which is why the parentheses go around those two, which I can use my first log rule on one last time. The log of five plus the log of two is the same as the log of five times two, which is the log of 10. And the log of 10 is just equal to one because the implied 10 to the first power is what gives you this 10. So it's three times one plus one, three plus one gives you four. You're like, whoa, that was way harder than when you originally did it up here. Thanks, but no thanks. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my calculator. And that's fair if you have that objection to solve this problem, it's certainly easier to do it this way. I wanted to do it this way and really mess with the coefficients and show you all these different tricks, not really to solve this problem, but to see the skills that can be useful for other problems. What if these weren't numbers that you could just throw into a calculator? What if these were X's and Y's or something and you really wanted to combine them in some way? It might ha help to have the ability to be able to do all this stuff that we just did. That was supposed to be a shorter video and it ended up being pretty intense, sorry about that. But hopefully that gives you lots of good practice with numerical examples and log rules.